Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back to my channel. As you've probably noticed, there hasn't been that much happening on the SSD market as of lately. Okay, yes, we got higher speeds due to popularization of the NVMe and PC Express standards which were implemented on them, alongside of bigger capacities thanks to the higher density NAND flash, but it seems like after that initial ramp up a couple of years ago, the adoption rate went down, mostly due to 2017 price spike, which slowed wider adoption that could potentially completely swap your regular hard drives for SSDs, especially in terms of secondary storage. Even Intel in the meantime again tried to push another version of their SSD caching technology, this time around called the Intel Obtain, as it was a cheaper solution of bringing your regular hard drive close to an SSD-like performance, while still keeping all that sweet, sweet terabytes of storage. This situation slowly started to change since the beginning of 2018, the prices started to drop due to NAND flash oversupply, so we are again seeing adoption rates slowly rising. All of the 2.5-inch SATA-based SSDs are pretty much set and done when it comes to performance, their capacity is still slowly growing from generation to generation, as well as their reduction in price, and just the right example of that is Kingston's new UV500 series. As you can see, I have it in a bit more beefier packaging than you would usually expect to get when buying an SSD, and that's because this is the so-called upgrade kit version of the UV500, which is a pretty familiar option to get with Kingston's SSD, and comes in with the expanded bundle by a pretty big margin. In here you'll get a free activation key for the Acronis True Image software, 3.5 inch to 2.5 inch adapter bracket, short data SATA and Molex to SATA power cables, and this 2.5 inch USB 3.0 external enclosure, but more on that later on, and of course the SSD itself. As some of you maybe noticed, the design of the outer housing is pretty much the same compared to the previous gen model, the UV400, just a tad darker color of the enclosure, and luckily I have one of those with me too, so I can put them side by side for you to see the difference. But, as you would expect, the insides are not the same, at least not completely. The main controller is still Marvel's 88SS1074 with an updated and polished out firmware, while the memory is Kingston's own 3D TLC NAND flash. What's also important for this model is that this is their first SSD series which features full disk 256-bit AES hardware-based encryption with the support for TCG Opal 2.0 encryption standard. But I'm not done yet with listing all the new stuff which this series brings in. This time the max capacity ranges almost up to 2 terabytes, or to be precise 1920 gigabytes, and starts off at 120 gigabytes, with the usual upwards increments of times 2 while I here have the 480 gigabyte 2.5 inch version. I've deliberately pointed out that 2.5 inch form factor naming because that's not the only form factor in which UV500 is going to sell. You also have the option of picking up an M.2 2280 module or MSATA module, making this series one of the rare ones out there that can be seen across the board almost in all form factors. In theory, and as they claim, performance shouldn't vary from form factor to form factor, only the 120 gigabyte capacity model, no matter what form factor, will have lower write speeds, and that's probably due to lower NAND flash stack configuration which this 120 gigabyte model has. And now let's move away from the specifications and check out the real life performance of this drive. For a clean install like this one, after motherboard's post was done, it took around 10 seconds to get onto the desktop, which is pretty much the usual result for a Windows boot up time on an SSD. Afterwards, I've installed a couple of games onto the drive, basically filled it up to the top, and check out how long it takes to load into the game from the game's main menu, as well as how does the drive perform synthetic benchmarks wise when it's fully loaded and also empty. Depending on the title, I was seeing loading times anywhere from few seconds to around half a minute in more demanding games, like for example Star Wars Battlefront 2, which is pretty much known for its long initial loading time. You can see all the loading numbers measured in real time on the screen. Of course, all of this can vary depending on the rest of the PC configuration and its components, you can check out mine down below in the description box, but in general the gap shouldn't be that wide if the PC is remotely from a newer generation. All in all, this is a good orientation point for potential users who are planning to make that first step towards getting an SSD.
Taking a look at some of your usual synthetic benchmarks, the UV500 pretty much delivers on what it claims when it comes to sequential read and write speeds from 500 to 530 megabytes per second on both ends, while the rest of the figures like the 4K depth read writes and IOPS were pretty much on average for this class of SSD. There was some performance drop off when I've again benchmarked the drive almost fully loaded, but that's expected and nothing out of the ordinary for this scenario and nothing that will make any difference whatsoever in terms of your day-to-day -day use. Even compared to some of the higher-end SSD models, the gap between them and, for example, this model won't bring any tangible difference when it comes to loading games or booting up, especially when it comes to 2.5-inch SATA ones, but it's always good to see all the benefits and what kind of performance improvements SSDs in general bring in compared to the regular hard drives. If you still don't have one, put everything else on hold, your mechanical keyboards, mice, fans, RGB mouse pads and even graphics card upgrades, just save up a bit and go out and buy at least a 240GB SSD, it will make your user experience completely different. I tend to stress that out as much as I can, especially when communicating with some of you in the comments, when you are for example building a new PC, as this piece of hardware is in my opinion one of the greatest performance leaps in the last decade when it comes to enhancing everyday user experience almost across all fields. As I said at the beginning, with this particular version of the UV500 model, the installation kit for notebooks and desktops, as Kingston calls it, you'll get a 2.5 inch external enclosure, which has a very easy way of putting a drive in or out of it. Despite this kit being more expensive than when you would buy just the drive itself, it can be very useful in terms of being a quick way of accessing some of your other 2.5 inch storage, being it SSDs or regular hard drives, or making your transition and imaging from an older to a newer drive easier. A nifty little gadget nonetheless. Getting back to the UV500 itself, to sum it up, this model is definitely a good candidate when we talk about value for your money, and that's something we are used to seeing from Kingston, as their SSDs are often on users shortlist when we talk about this particular segment, falling under that group of best buy options available on the market. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, that really helps me a lot, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, catch you later guys!